In this tutorial, we will be focusing on the question screen. However, because the questions are highly dependent on the assessment mode that is selected, we will start by looking at the different modes available. The standard screen and the assessment mode video tutorials discuss the modes in greater detail. However, we'll take a moment to mention the differences. If you select the questions-based approach, the system will present a list of questions that are grouped and simplified in both language and content. This is the recommended approach for most assessments. The standard requirements-based approach is normally used for regulated industries. It presents the requirements exactly as they are written in the standard. The third option, Cybersecurity Framework, allows the user to perform a risk-based cybersecurity evaluation using a customized question set. We'll start with the questions-based approach. In Step 2, we select one or more standards as the basis for the questions. We'll select the Universal Questions and the NIST Special Publication 800-82 options. We've already used the SAL screens to determine that our security assurance level is moderate. If it had been high or very high, then the system would have displayed more questions to answer. If the SAL was low, there would be fewer questions. We've also created a diagram. This will cause the tool to open up component questions related to the devices on our network diagram. Now we can go to the question screen. There are several key parts to this screen. We will start with the Question Categories docking window. You can pin it open or allow it to dynamically open and close. We'll pin it open for now. In the upper left corner, you can see the selected standards and the security assurance level. You can also see the filtering hyperlink. The filter applies to the selected category that is highlighted in blue. We will click on the Marked for Review button in one of the questions. When we click on the filter, the tool limits the questions to only those that meet the specified criteria. This is very useful when looking for unanswered questions or for going back to review comments or questions specifically marked to be reviewed. In the window, you'll notice the tree structure showing all the categories in the question set. You can click on a category to navigate to that group of questions if you wish. For example, we'll click on Audit and Accountability to see the questions associated with this category. We're going to close the Question Categories window and look at another way to navigate through the list of categories. In the upper left corner are list boxes that show where you are in the hierarchy but at the same time allow you to navigate within each level. To jump to a category, you can either select a category from the drop-down list or you can type in the name of the category you would like to jump to. To type in a category name, click to the right of the drop-down. Now you will be able to type in a subtopic. For example, we will go directly to Personnel. Now, let's go back to Access Control. The questions in this mode can all be answered in four ways. They can be answered with either a yes or no. The NA answer is used to indicate that this question is not applicable. If you answer NA, then the tool basically throws the question out, and you are neither penalized nor given credit for the answer. For example, if you do not have any wireless devices in the facility, then the wireless questions can be marked as not applicable. Be careful not to use NA in place of a no answer. The last option is ALT, which is short for alternate. You can use the ALT choice if you are meeting the intent of the question, but not in the manner prescribed. If you click on ALT, you will have to describe how you are meeting the intent. Alternate answers are counted the same as a yes answer. Under the overall category are subtopics, like the one shown here. They are not questions that you will be evaluated against, but general questions that allow a global no or NA answer. For example, the first question, do you have any access agreements, formal or informal, for third-party access to your system? If you do not have any access agreements, you can just answer no and move on. The detailed questions about access agreements will all be marked with a no. Let's look at how the buttons work. If I mark a no in the subtopic, then it propagates a no to all the questions between it and the next subtopic. 
marking an NA acts the same. Notice that I can still click any specific answer in any way, regardless of how the subtopic was first answered. Some of the subtopics are statements only and do not have the options to mark NO or NA. You will have to review each question and mark appropriately. When the questions are self-explanatory, there may only be a title in the subtopic. The subtopics do not have to be used. For example, I can ignore the subtopics and just answer the questions one at a time. In most assessments, the subtopic selection approach will be used sparingly. The numbered questions in each category are shown here. They are the questions that you will be evaluated against. To answer a question, simply click on one of the radio buttons to the right of the question. When you answer a question, the tool will open the question information window. You can also open the window directly by clicking on the eye icon to the right of the radio buttons. The question information tutorial will explain more about this window. You can add comments, define alternate methods, or mark questions for review by clicking on the paper icon on the right of the screen. The questions comments tutorial will discuss this window in greater depth. When you click on the alternate answer for a question, the tool automatically opens the comments window where you can enter text to explain how the requirement is being met. The last buttons we will discuss are the previous and next buttons located on the bottom of the screen. These are consistently used in the tool to move between screens or, in the case here, between question categories. In our example, the next category is Account Management, shown to the side of the button. Clicking the button moves us to that set of questions. So far, we have been looking at the questions-based mode for this assessment. Let's go back to the standard screen and click on the Requirements Mode button. And then, we'll select the NERC-SIP Revision 4 standard. We can now see that each requirement is presented verbatim from the standard. The radio buttons that were previously labeled Yes and No are now labeled Met and Unmet. Since these are no longer phrased as questions, you will have to read the full requirement and determine if you are meeting all the controls defined in it. The rest of the functionality is the same as what was presented earlier in the questions mode. We will now go back to the standard screen and select the Cybersecurity Frameworks mode. Notice that the titles of Step 2 and Step 3 change. This is discussed in detail in a separate video tutorial. At the question screen, we can see that the framework questions are loaded. There is also an arrow button that opens a drop-down list of related questions to help you better understand the context of the requirement. The rest of the functionality is the same as what was presented earlier. This tutorial introduced you to the question screen. Please see other more specific tutorials for examples of how each of the associated windows work.